side of the field. Jumping into game one of this set, and it's going to be the Alolan Persian and the Porygon Z, one of my personal favourites around. I'm very excited to see that there on the field. And Graham has opted to bring the Incineroar and the Whimsicott. Well, we talk about fake out Pokemon in the form of Incineroar. Don't forget, Persian is one of those well known for using that move and, and causing so much disruption, not just on its first turn with fake out, but also with its follow up parting shots or whatever kind of stat lowering moves it wants to use. Of course, you just have to be careful for a potential <laughs> switch into the Bravey area as we talked about before the game. But if it doesn't leave the field with parting shot, it can do so much more. That fur coat ability, absolutely essential in keeping it around. It does seem though that there's another threat on the field that Graham has to watch out for. It's going to be the Porygon Z, something I know you're very much a big fan of personally. <laughs> and uh, Porygon Z immediately Dynamaxing can start to take knockouts really quickly. It certainly can. If left unchecked, it's going to give Graham a little bit of trouble. Playing defensively with his Windsor straight away, quite wise when you're facing down against a fake out user like that Alolan Persian. But the Incineroar manages to get the fake out onto that opposing Persian. Um, not going to be dealing any damage this turn, but Porygon Z remaining unchecked goes straight for that Max Strike into the Incineroar. Doesn't actually manage to pick up the KO, indicating a potential Assault Vest on that Incineroar because Max Strike is so powerful normally that would be able to pick a nice KO, revealing the Life Orb there on Porygon Z. Again, not an unsurprising item on that Pokemon. Assault Vest is, I think, the only way. It's something I've been looking at a little bit in the early days of this format. Really the only way to keep something like Incineroar around against <laughs> Porygon Z. There's only so much being naturally bulky can do for you, especially when the Porygon Zs are adding that Life Orb for that extra boost of damage on top. Uh, interesting to see the Whimsicott playing it safe there. Decides to protect. Could have tried to weave in something like a Tailwind. It does do that on this turn, but you've got to be cognizant of those max strikes coming through and lowering the speed. Yeah, getting the Tailwind up here is critical. Like, you need to be able to start countering these max strikes. Porygon Z goes for another one here. Of course, the speed beam dropped on Graham's side. Goes straight into that Whimsicott. Gonna go straight down to the Focus Sash there. So both Incineroar and Whimsicott looking incredibly vulnerable going into this last turn. Their HP has been really depleted, particularly from that little bit of extra chip from the foul play on that Alolan Persian. Yeah, but in the end of the day, you really need your Porygon Z to be picking up knockouts. And the way that Graham's team is kind of set up right now with the Assault Fest, not getting knocked out by the foul play, and of course the Focus Sash on Whimsicott means two turns that the Porygon Z's Dynamax have gone. He has managed to max strike twice, but he's not picked up a single knockout with it. So as long as Graham doesn't switch, that Porygon Z's third and final Dynamax turn is kind of going to be used on one of these more supportive Pokemon, potentially opening up the option for Graham to come in, bring in something that he really wants to deal the big damage with, and then go from there. So I think he's probably feeling pretty good about how this kind of early stage of the game has played out. That foul play falling short does show one of the problems with the Alolan Persian. While it's great at disruption, when you need it to help tidy up those knockouts, it can be a little bit slow at doing that. Whimsicott here going straight for the Dazzling Gleam does do some good damage to that Alolan Persian and gets a little critical hit on that Porygon Z. Alolan Persian though revealing its item gonna regain up a little bit of HP thanks to its Aguave Berry as well um, and follows up with the Foul Play so once again targeting into that Incineroar this time it is enough to pick up the KO but as I think you mentioned earlier Adam Graham's not gonna be too worried about this it gives him the opportunity to bring in a Pokemon from the back and still utilize that Tailwind that'll be active on the field. Whimsicott on one HP might be the biggest kind of overkill of damage that's ever happened. Porygon Z going for that max strike, probably taking more damage in recoil there from the life orb than it did dealing out with the max strike. Yeah, but we see Graham is going to be able to put himself in a, a position where he may be able to just swing the momentum back in his favor so rapidly. He is down four Pokemon to two, and that's usually a deficit that's very hard to come back from. But I think something we do talk about a lot in this kind of new format where we do have the Dynamax. If you're going to be able to get your Dynamax to do more, then you're going to be able to win the game. And even in a Pokemon deficit, I think you could could swing it back in your favor. So really like the way the board is set up. And I kind of like the way that Graham just let those last two get knocked out. He never tried to weave in kind of another Pokemon to try and deal with the Porygon a little bit early because now all those speed drops from the Max Strike aren't in play to try and kind of slow down the effect of this Tailwind. Of course, Tailwind's been on the field already for a turn, so it's not going to get its full value with, I guess, these Pokemon that Graham wants to clean up with and swing the momentum back with. But, you know, he's still got a couple turns and now he's got a Dynamax Cinderace to, mm -hmm. to try and deal with it as well. 
Yeah, preserving your Dynamax as well is critical here for Graham. Jaden no longer has access to that. He's used it on his Porygon Z. And being able to go on the Cinderace that has Lubero ability, going to be able to change that sort of same type attack bonus depending on what move it goes for. This time going for the Max Knuckle, most likely coming off that high jump kick, going to be super effective against that Porygon Z. So quite a wise price to protect there from Jaden. But actually, Graham targets down into that Alolan Purge and removes it from the field and will, of course, get this attack boost as well. That's something that's going to boost up the bravery um, as the Alolan Persian will faint. Does give Jaden the opportunity to bring in another Pokemon from the back, maybe to start countering these two, but I think timing your Dynamax for this late in the game, having that boost up as well, and being able to still pressure that Porygon Z going into the next turn really puts him in a fantastic position and is changing this ball position momentum around. Yep, that turn just goes so well for Graham. He doesn't fall foul of any, you know, protects and throwing his, his moves into that. He does get the knockout. He does get the attack boost there. So now at three Pokemon to two, probably feeling, uh, you know, a lot better. That turn was very key in making sure the game turned in his favor. He does now have to do with the Togekiss. Uh, not always the easiest thing to try and remove from the field, but we've talked about it so many times. Cinderace has access to so many typings and, of course, moves. That Libero ability does mean that it can cause a lot of problems. Uh, you know, if the Cinderace can deal with the Togekiss on its own, that does leave the, the Braviary free to deal with something like this Porygon Z. Exactly, and if that Cinderace is going with something like an Iron Head, it can go for a Max Steel Spike into the Togekiss here. And I think Jaden playing really well here, trying to waste some of the Z moves that Cinderace is going to be going for, going for the Protect so that they cannot deal as much damage. Cinderace, of course, going here for the Max Steel Strike straight into that Togekiss. Oh, does 50% of damage there, unchecked with the Protect. That would have been the KO there. It would have been so, so strong. And obviously getting that defense boost up as well. Going to be helpful against this Pokemon. Um, Cinderace going to take a little bit of recoil as well as Bravery follows up here with the Brave Bird. Going to target down into that Gudra that switched in. And thanks to the attack boost we got previously, it oh, does what? so much damage. Oh my goodness, the offensive pressure right now from Graham is extraordinary. Yeah, and playing it slow, playing it very gently early in the game, you know, letting those Pokemon waste those Dynamax turns from the Porygon Z has paid off so, so well for him. I really don't see a way that Jaden can weave his way back into the game. The Togekiss knows now about the Max Steel Spike. Uh, of course, it's already the Steel type through the Libero ability. That damage with the same type attack bonus, absolutely huge. And as long as Graham just keeps throwing out attacks, he should be able to seal up this game. We'll see the Togekiss uh, not take that very well. We saw how much it took through the Protect. And uh, <laughs> I'd imagine that this Gudra is going to be able to kind of, uh, you know, it isn't going to be enough to slow down this Braviary, which has got an attack boost as well. Exactly. That's the thing as well. Graham's got the attack stats booster, but he's also got the speed advantage at the moment. You see Cinderace and Bravery constantly going first here. Gudra will fall down as well to the critical hit here from the Brave Bird. You can just see the offensive pressure that's being rolled out here. When Porygon Z comes back in from the back as well, unless there's going to be something like a high jump kick miss, um, then Porygon Z is going to be um, KO'd very, very quickly from this opposing Cinderace. Yeah, I mean, you, I don't know if the Porygon 2 has an answer to both Pokemon on Graham's side of the field. <laughs> you know, Graham would have to pr start protecting things, or, you know, and, and Jaden would have to land perfect targeting. Uh, so this game has, has really turned around from a very early and very offensive start from Jaden Castley. He wasn't able to capitalize and create a big enough advantage to stop Graham coming through at the end and, and kind of just sweeping through his team. So uh, really good play by both players there. I love the offensive start from Jaden. I really mm -hmm. do think Porygon Z is so much to handle. But some of the targeting, you know, causing some problems, revealing that Assault Vest on Incineroar definitely made things harder for him, but not being able to get the knockout with Persian was was definitely a problem. It certainly was, and I think you called it really well there, Adam, where you said the Porygon Z, yes, it's dealing so much damage, the Incineroar and the Whimsicott really are limited in what they can do, but the critical thing was they were still remaining on the field. The Porygon Z wasn't picking up the solid one hit capable of doing, and if you can utilize that on all three Dynamax turns, that's three of the four opposing Pokemon gone just within your Dynamax turns, and then the rest of your team can sort of pick away at whichever Pokemon is remaining, but the fact that Graham was able to expertly maneuver his Pokemon using Protect, um, and some of the targeting on Jaden's side as well to keep the Pokemon on the field for when the Dynamax was over and then bring in his strong Pokemon from the back and can go, hey, I can still Dynamax. I have some type advantage here as well using my Libero ability and was just able to pick up the game from there. Yeah, I mean, it was, it really was such a smart opening few turns from Graham. 
He let those two Pokemon buy time, set up a Tailwind, and basically, you know, they rolled out the red carpet for the rest of his team to come through in the Cinderace and the Braviary. Uh, they even mm -hmm. moved the crowd out of the way by getting the the old uh, Dynamax Porygon Z done with. And <laughs> yeah. then they were just able to come in and, and push through for the rest of the game. So really smart play. And I think in this hyper offensive format, something that's been talked about in the early weeks, you've got to make sure that these Dynamax turns, any of your big Pokemon that do the hugest amount of damage are getting knockouts. Exactly. I'd like to see some adjustments from Jaden going into that game too. Now that he knows about the items on that Incineroar and the Whimsicott as well, he might be able to play around it a little bit better, maybe going for a double target into the Whimsicott, for example, to make sure that you're breaking that Focus Sash, picking up the KO, because if it's the same kind of leads, Incineroar really can't do too much in that situation. Yes, go for some Snarls, reduce the special attack, but damage-wise, you can start picking up some KO. So let's kick it over to game two and let's see what they're going to be bringing to see if they can take it all the way to a game three or not. Yeah, I think Jaden actually has some really nice options uh, in his team to, to deal that offensive damage as well. So uh, there's no change in the leads from either of these players. Uh, could be a change in targeting and the way that the game goes. Just because we've got the same start doesn't necessarily mean we're going to have the same uh, kind of turn order. There's definitely adaptations to be made. Maybe, you know, the fake out heading towards the Whimsicott might help out because then you can prevent the Tailwind. That would be important. Of course, he did see it protect last turn. Uh, so knowing that, you know, maybe he could just start trying to play around that as much as possible. It looks like Graham's going to just keep going uh, with keeping the Whimsicott safe. Yeah, and no Dynamax this turn. Porygon C just going for a Protect, as the Alolan Persian does go for the Fake Out into the opposing Incineroar, so just stopping it from going for a Fake Out of its own, and pretty much this turn zero was very, very neutral. The Fake Out's really just being burnt, and some defensive plays from Whimsicott and Porygon Z. Yep, no, no real change there, apart from a little bit of damage on Incineroar from the Fake Out, and Protect's being shown and used. Uh, that said, you know, we're kind of back to that same position that we were in in Game 1, where... Porygon needs to start landing its knockouts as quickly as possible. And uh, with the Dynamax here, I, you know, you have to assume it's going to be the Porygon Z. I'd be very shocked mm -hmm. to see an Alolan Persian <laughs> ever Dynamax. Uh, but you never know. You've got to, you know, keep the mystery alive for a little bit there. But Porygon Z needs to get knockouts early on in this mm -hmm. game. Else, we could just have a repeat of game number one here. Yeah, I mean, depending on the move pool of that Porygon Z as well, if it's got something like Blizzard, it could go um, for the max move there. Take the Whimsicott down to its Focus Sash and then pick up the chip with the hail that it would set up as well as part of the secondary effects. But we have yet to see what other move pulls this Porygon Z has. Its special attack will be dropped by the Snarl though from that Incineroar um, as the Alolan Persian goes for fake tears. So really great synergy from these two Pokemon here. Targeting down into the Incineroar, gonna lower that special defense, meaning this Max Strike will now be able to pick up the KO against Incineroar. Assault Vest or not, that Incineroar's going down. Yeah, there's, there's nothing your Assault Vest can do against Fake Tears. Really takes it out of the game, and knowing how close it was last time, that just confirms the knockout. That said, you know, the Whimsicott got the Tailwind up on the field. No questions asked, no problems there at all. And this actually could kind of accelerate the turn order for Graham. Last game, he had to wait for both Incineroar and Whimsicott to get knocked out in one turn. Now he just gets to pick which Pokemon he wants to bring in to, to start capitalizing on every single turn of that Tailwind. You know, it, mm -hmm. it's definitely going to be tough, I think for the uh, for the Porygon Z to withstand big attacks from either Braviary or Cinderace, uh, we know about the Braviary's moveset. We just saw it on screen there. Uh, you know, the big answer to Rotom Z is fighting type attacks, and Graham has his pick of them right now. Yeah, exactly. Using fighting type attacks on both those Pokemon in the back do just give him a little bit more flexibility potentially in which Pokemon he might want to Dynamax, but still be able to apply some big pressure to, against that Porygon Z. Actually, in or out of the Dynamax, you know, something like Hydro Cakes and like a close combat are going to be dealing a huge amount of damage. Um, it does, of course, apply pressure here. Porygon Z still in the position where it could go for another Max Strike in this situation, but Graham going straight for that Dynamax, going to Dynamax up the Bravery. Well, he has to be careful because if he max strikes and lowers the speed, then uh, that's going to start causing some problems for him. Uh, <laughs> so we'll be curious to see if we get that interaction. Uh, it's something that a lot of people kind of, you know, overlook, I think, when they're just throwing out moves. But I think with this Protect, what Graham's trying to do, or the Max Guard rather, what Graham's trying to do is just gather a little bit of information, uh, see if he can bait out uh, a, a piece of information about the move set on this Porygon Z. He also avoids the fake tears. Uh, but the Max Strike is going to come into that Max Guard, so uh, yeah, no no real issues there. Uh, really smart play, and that means that the, the turn count is a little bit uh, desynchronized for these for these Dynamaxes. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, you were saying you don't want to go for the map straight into that bravery thanks to the Defiant ability. You don't want that to work against you. Um, but doubling up with the fake tears and the power that Porygon Z can put out will potentially have picked up the KO there against the Bravery. Of course, Porygon Z is at minus one special attack from that style as well, so the calculations might be a little off. Um, but the one thing I like about Graham going for that Max Guard is it burns a turn from Porygon Z. Like, yes, you lose one of your Max turns, but I think the pivotal thing here is to stop the damage output from the Porygon Z. You can still close combat it afterwards when it's back to its sort of regular size, but you can't do that if you've been KO'd. And also in that turn, he, he kind of helps himself out uh, by getting that Dazzling Gleam on. Obviously, it does a huge amount of damage to Persian. And it does get a, you know, a nice little chunk away of the Porygon Z's health as well. Every little bit's definitely going to help out uh, in these terms. Braviary, though, just starting us off with a max airstream. Uh, wants to make sure it's got a nice speed boost in its favor. Uh, maybe something it can use once Tailwind has expired as well. Yeah, just keeping the speed up on his side of the field. Porygon Z able to hang on from that Dazzling Gleam, but I wonder if the Life Orb Recoil might take it down at the end of this turn. Does manage to go for the Max Drive, but as you can see, without having that fake tears doubled up, it only does 50% damage. Will reduce the speed, so it's back to neutral after the Max Airstream, but I think crucially for the Bravery there, it's got the attack boost as well, meaning it's going to be applying a lot of pressure going forward. Yeah, and there's still another turn of Tailwind as well. So in this turn, you know, the Braviary <laughs> with a double kind of boosted attack uh, just because of that Defiant ability. Yes, the, the Max Airstream does cancel out the, the change in speed, so he's just relying on Tailwind at this point. But this Braviary in his last turn of Dynamax is going to be able to throw down so much damage. And there's no way to get a, a full Protect. There's no access to Max Guard in this turn. Uh, and that means that the Porygons you can get kind of picked up by the Dazzling Gleam here. And then, you know, the Togekiss is going to have to just take a whole lot of damage. Even through the Protect, I imagine this is going to hurt a little bit. Yeah, I like the Protect here from the Togekiss. Even though Dazzling, um, the Max Airstream does do a good chunk of damage, there wasn't really any point going for any redirection away from this Porygon Z. Uh, Porygon Z, like you said, will go down to a Dazzling Gleam, it'll go down to its own life, life orb recoil, so it wasn't really going to be there for the longevity of this turn. Um, so Togekiss just protecting so that it can go for redirection and be a more supportive Pokemon for maybe some of the Pokemon that Jaden has got in the back. Porygon Z has been KO'd, but as we always say, this now can be used as a good opportunity for Jaden to bring something in from the back and apply pressure against the Pokemon that he's facing down against. And of course, Bravery, it's Dynamax turns are over now. Yeah, it's about to finish this Dynamax. It does have a speed boost from that last Airstream into the Togekiss' Protect. The Tailwind has expired, but, you know, unlike many teams where we see Tailwinds used once and they kind of just use those turns uh, to completely dominate the game, you know, we're still level in the Pokemon count right now, but Whimsicott is on the, health, uh, on the field at full health and can just set up another Tailwind. So even a Pokemon like Cinderace, which is naturally exceptionally speedy, uh, can still be outpaced by something like the Tailwind. Uh, just making sure that everything's super fast. And, you know, Graham, we saw it when he was hovering Pokemon earlier, has a Cinderace of his own, never has to worry about, uh, about you know, getting kind of matched or, or outsped there. Exactly. Wise Protect there from the Bravery just wants to keep itself protected from any damage that Jaden can go out here. Um, Cinderace is going to go straight for the Pyro Ball into that Protect as well, so Whimsicott being able to stay here on the field and go for another Dazzling Gleam. Um, I think the Whimsicott actually... Being relatively unchecked has certainly caused a lot of problems um, for Jaden here. We know it's got his Focus Sash. Like you said, it can go for things like Tailwind in this situation. Those Dazzling Gleams are picking up crucial damage as well. We saw how much pressure it could apply to the Alolan Persian, obviously dealing out super effective damage. But having that spread move as well shows that all these little bits of chip are adding up as well. Yeah, I, I think honestly that these Dazzling Gleams have been key in putting things in knockout range with absolute confidence for Graham. Uh, interesting to see him just keep on throwing them down, even though he doesn't have the Tailwind in play. He's just saying, well, I'm, I'm confident enough with the boost from Airstream, uh, so I'm just going to try and get some damage down. We do see Braviary heading first in this turn, and these Rock Slides, after that earlier boost from Defiant, are going to be probably far too much to handle. Uh, and I think Graham, you know, once that Cinderace is taken off the field, uh, is probably feeling pretty good about his uh, way to close out this game. Yeah, Rock Slide here is absolutely awesome on the Bravery. The Pyro Ball used previously from the Cinderace meant that it still kept its fire typing, so it's going to be dealing such big damage. And of course, Rock Slide is something Togekiss doesn't want to face down against either. 
Um, I think the problem though mainly here for Jaden is he's outsped at this stage and both Persian and Togekiss are at so low health. Any kind of damage, something like a Dazzling Gleam is going to pick up the KO against that alone in Persian. And even though it could go for something like a Fake Out, Stall Out Turn, Whimsicott's doing exactly what it needs to do in this situation. Go for the Protect, as well as the Bravery. Just make sure that that Fake Out can't be utilized to maybe pick up any kind of KO and gain any sort of momentum in this situation. Um, just leaving him free for the next turn to outspeed and pick up some KOs. Yeah, absolutely no reason not to do that there. You've got the Fake Out pressure come back on the field. Uh, you don't want to get caught by any critical hits or anything nasty like that from Togekiss. So you just double protect. It's a, a very common play to see when people save a fake out for later. They just bring it in and say, you know what? Uh, I'll just double protect. I didn't use any of them last turn. So you can't do anything this turn. And, and I think one of Persian's kind of key features there uh, completely taken off the field. Togekiss is going to take its turn to protect. But I think this is really going to be Graham uh, just making sure he picks up the knockouts as and when he needs them. Exactly, just going through the motions now, I think, at this stage. Graham knows exactly what he needs to be able to do to win. Picks up the KO against that Lone Persian Toga Kiss. Although protecting for this particular turn, there's not a lot that it can do against sort of all the Pokemon that Graham has remaining at this stage. Toga Kiss, well known for only really being able to attack both Pokemon with something like a Dazzling Gleam. Um, and that Whimsicott still having access to its sashes really puts it in a great position. So we see the forfeit coming out there, and Graham takes the set 2 0. I mean, Graham getting.